uh, Northern Virginia Community College, or NOVA as we like to be called, uh, is a very large institution and it's a minority serving institution disproportionately drawing from the immigrant and low income communities of our of our region. And uh, I was struck by the literature that I read from Achieving the Dream that so many of our students come with the intention of completing a degree or a credential and yet such a small percentage actually reach that goal. And I was struck by the fact that Achieving the Dream appears to have a methodology, a way of helping institutions look at what they're doing systematically and be guided in making good decisions for students by using data. And that was something that uh, we weren't doing. And uh, the notion that there were practices or best practices that had demonstrated real outcomes for students um, and that, that institutions could be taught how to use these, how to adapt them appropriately and then use them in their institutions. And so NOVA's been at this about five years now and we're seeing real differences in completion rates of students and spectacular results in additional graduates. What are some of the challenges that you see students face in your area in particular? Well, so many of our students are the first in their family to go to college, and they don't have a good idea of what to expect or how to navigate the system. And um, they get lost, they get frustrated, they get disappointed, and after a, a struggle, usually within the first year, they drop out. And so we've systematically looked at that phenomenon. And uh, we're in the process now of building and scaling up um, an intervention that begins working with our students often before they know they want to be our students. So that is within the K-12 system? Well, we, we start uh, not only with the K-12 system uh, as early as middle school, but we also start with adults who are in training programs that are not related to community colleges. And so these people aren't sure what their own abilities are and don't see themselves as college students. And we work with them to slowly get them to see themselves as being successful college students and then show them the way to make that happen. We work with community-based nonprofits that are working in low-income communities. And we map our program with their program and then join as one organization in doing the skills training and job placement that's necessary, but then clear a path to complete a credential that allows them not only to get employment at this employer, but with a portable credential to be able to get employment at other places. And uh, our nonprofit partners have embraced this goal with us, and together we're doing what neither could have done alone. As a national network, how do you, um, how do you see the value of, of, say, learning from other presidents or ha and how that will spread to the other community colleges in the country? This whole notion of completion is a very difficult um, proposition for colleges who are facing significant reductions in government assistance. So here we have a tidal wave of new students coming, often underprepared, and at the very same time, we're having our budgets cut. And so it's very clear to me that we're not going to be sex successful just by working harder, but by redesigning what it is that we have done. And by thinking about our work in new and different ways. And I find that achieving the dream has the kind of thought leaders within it and successful practitioners who really have breakthrough ideas. And it's because of that network uh, we're able to look at uh, promising practices, try them out at home, and then uh, share results with our colleagues. I think it's the very best way to learn. With, with budgets being reduced and expectations for completion being raised, um, it means that the, the goal that we have to embrace is the realization we have to serve more underprepared students with better outcomes than ever before at a reduced cost per student. This will require complete redesign and a rethink of how we do our work. 
Uh, how did you come to spend so much of your, of your, your life with community college and this area? Do you have a, a particular um, a, attachment to community college and what, what, what would that be? Well, community colleges were my lifeline. I was the first in my family to think about going to college. And in fact, I didn't see myself as ever going to college. I had not been a good high school student. And after graduating from high school and without a plan, um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And I took my girlfriend to the local community college where she was going to be a student. And the next thing you know, I'm in class. Uh, and feeling very awkward about it and feeling very inadequate. And uh, I had a transformational experience that changed my life. And I, I never forget that. I don't forget what it was like being someone who feels like they don't belong here. I never forget how complicated this culture is to, <clears throat> to someone that's never been through it or had anyone in their family go through it. And I never forget the traumatic impact that teachers can make in the lives of our students by seeing potential in them that the students don't see themselves. So for me, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to go back to the kind of institution that changed my life. Thank you, Bob. It's a privilege to hear your story. Thanks Thank for you. sharing. You're welcome.